Yo, 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 what's going on, people? So today I got to explain the OnChange event handler in React. OnChange is an event handler used primarily with form elements, including, but not limited to, input, text area, select, and radio buttons. OnChange triggers a function every time the value of the input changes. So let me give you an example. We will be using the useState hook, so we need to import it. Import React. I would like the use state hook from React. Using the use state hook, we're going to create a name variable, a stateful variable, const name, and we need a setter function for this variable. Set name equals the use state hook. You can set an initial value. I'll set mine to be an empty string. I will be returning a div element to enclose all of our markup. Within my div element, I will create an input element. And here's my input element. I will set the value of the input element to be some JavaScript, my stateful name variable. Then I will set the on change event handler to be a reference to a JavaScript function, which we still need to create. This will be a callback. Let's create a function to handle a name change. It's going to be similar to handle click. Function handle name change. We have one parameter, an event. That's going to be provided to us. When we change the value of this input element, I will invoke our set name function. We will set our name variable to be access our event object access its target, then get the value property. OnChange is going to be set equal to a callback to this function. When we type something or somehow change the value within here, call this function. And then afterwards, I will include a paragraph element that has the text of name and include some JavaScript. I will include my name variable. So what should happen is when I type in a name, it will update in real time. With use state, I can set the initial value to be something too. I'll set my initial value to be guessed. The on change event handler triggers a function every time the value of the input changes. Right now we have an initial value. If I start deleting this, my name is going to update. This time, we'll create an input element for a number instead of text. I will create a stateful variable for a quantity, as if we're ordering something. Quantity, and we need a setter function. Set quantity equals the use state hook. Would we like an initial value? Not yet, but we'll get to that later. I will create a function to handle quantity change. It's the same formula as before. We will be provided with an event. So let's write a parameter for that. We will use the setter function for the quantity. Set quantity will pass in access our event, access its target, then access its value. Then we need some HTML elements. Let me scroll down. I will create an input element. I will set the value of this element to be our quantity. Then I will set the on change event handler to be a callback to a JavaScript function. Handle quantity change. I will set the type of this element to be a number. Type equals number. Afterwards, I will add a paragraph with our quantity and display our quantity variable. So now we have arrows to select a number. I will update the quantity to be one, two, three, four, five. I'll set an initial value of one. Let's pretend that we're ordering something. We're going to assume that the user wants to buy at least one of something. That's how you can use onChange to reflect a number that's changing within an input element. 
All right, now we're going to create a text area. A user is going to be buying something. We'll have a user leave a comment. I will create const comment set comment equals use state. I'll set the initial state of my comment to be an empty string. Then I'll create a function to handle comment change. Function handle comment change. We have one parameter, an event. We will use our setter for our comment. Then pass in, access our event, access its target, then access its value. Then we need our HTML elements. We will create a text area element. I will set the value to be our comment variable. Then set the on change event handler to be a callback to handle comment change. I'm also going to add a placeholder for some placeholder text. Placeholder equals, in my specific example, this text area will be for specific delivery instructions. If somebody's shopping on your site and they order something, they might want to provide additional delivery instructions. Leave package on the back porch, ring the doorbell after the delivery is complete, stuff like that. So for my placeholder, I'll type in enter delivery instructions. And there's my placeholder text. And then just to see if this updates, I'll add a paragraph element with my comment then insert my comment variable. All right, let's see if this works. Leave package on front porch and avoid the killer chihuahua. That's how we can use on change with a text area. All right, the next one's going to be a little more complicated. We're going to use a select element for a drop down menu. We'll create a drop down menu for a payment. Is somebody going to pay with a Visa, a MasterCard, a gift card? Const payment set payment. This will be a payment type. We'll use use state. I will set the initial value to be an empty string. Then we need a handler function. Function handle payment change. We have one parameter and event. Then we'll use that setter function for the payment. Set payment event access its target, then the value. Our select element has a pair of tags. We'll place option elements within our select element. The opening select element is going to have a value equal to our payment variable. I will set the on change event handler equal to a callback to the handle payment change function. We have some options within our select element. The text on my first option will be select an option. So now my drop down menu has select an option. For this option's value, I will set it to be an empty string. This will be the default. Let's create another option. The text on this option element will be a visa, if somebody's paying with a visa card. The value will be a string of visa. Besides the defaults, we do have an option for visa. Then MasterCard. MasterCard, the value will be a string of MasterCard. And then a gift card. Gift card, the value will be gift card. So besides our default, we have Visa, MasterCard, and gift card. After our select element, I'll create a paragraph. The text on the paragraph will be payment. Then I'll display our payment stateful variable. When I select Visa, our payment is going to update with Visa. 
MasterCard, and gift card. With use state, I can even set an initial value. I could set the initial value to be, for example, Visa, MasterCard, or a gift card. But I'll keep it as an empty string so we get that default text of select an option. The last form element I'll cover is radio buttons, and these are going to be the most complicated. We'll create a pair of two radio buttons for a delivery method, either pickup or a delivery. Does somebody want to come into a store to pick up our package, or is a driver going to take it to their residence? I will create const, let's say shipping, for the shipping method, and a setter function for set shipping equals use state. For the time being, I will set the initial state to be an empty string. We'll create a handler function, function handle shipping change. We have one parameter of event. I will use that setter function of set shipping. Access our event argument, access its target, access its value. Within our HTML markup, we're going to create a pair of radio buttons. We'll create a label. We need a pair of label elements. The text on the first label will be pickup. Are we going to pick up our package from a store? We'll create a second label. I'll just copy what we have, paste it. The second label will be for a delivery. Within my label, I'll create an input element. I will set the type to equal radio. I will set the value of this radio button to be pickup. I'll place these additional properties on a new line just for readability. I will set the checked attribute equal to a JavaScript expression. Let's check to see if our shipping stateful variable is strictly equal to our value of pickup. This will evaluate to be true or false. If this expression is true, then we'll trigger our on change event handler and set it equal to a JavaScript function. It's going to be a callback to handle shipping change. Let's copy this input element, then within our second label, paste it. But we'll change our value to be pickup to delivery. Within our checked property, check to see if shipping is strictly equal to delivery. If this expression is true, then checked will be true. This will trigger the on change event handler. Just to reflect the change, I'm going to add a paragraph element with text of shipping. I will insert some JavaScript. I will insert our shipping stateful variable. I'm going to add a break after our first label just for readability. I think that looks better. If I were to select pickup, the shipping method changes to pickup. We're going to pick up our delivery from a nearby store. If I change it to delivery, the shipping method changes to delivery. With the use state hook, we can set an initial state. Let's assume that if somebody is ordering something from our site, they will want it delivered. I will set the initial state to be delivery. And that did update. But if somebody does want to pick it up, they can easily just change that by selecting this radio button. All right, everybody, so that is the on change event handler. It's used primarily with form elements, including but not limited to input, text area, select, and radio buttons. On change triggers a function every time the value of the input changes. So, for example, if I were to type in my name into this input element, that change is immediately going to be reflected in real time. And well, everybody, that is the on change event handler in React.